I'm Matt Brown from Alaskan Bush People, and I have a hidden talent you might not know about. I juggle. Discovery Channel's Alaskan Bush People was one of the most watched reality shows on television as it followed the lives of the unusual Brown family who chose to live off the grid in Alaska. It premiered in May 2014 and millions of people tuned in season after season. Matt Brown, the firstborn son of Amora Amy Branson Brown and the late Billy Brian Brown, was not seen in the show after its eighth season, which was said to be due to his substance abuse and rape allegations. Matthew Jeremiah Brown was born on the 7th of September 1982 in Fort Worth, Texas, USA and grew up with his four brothers, Bam Bam, Bear, Gabe and Noah and two sisters, Snowbird and Rainy, in southern Alaska in a home they called Brown Town. It was said that their place was in a relatively remote area with the nearest town a 20-minute boat ride away. His parents both hailed from North Texas. His father married 15-year-old Amy who was more than 10 years his junior in 1979. They lived in Fort Worth and had a small plumbing company. But Billy came home from work one day and said to Amy, I don't know if I can do the 9 to 5 the rest of my life. Amy was on board with this, so they all left and traveled for a while, looking for a place where they could settle. Eventually, they sold the truck and tools to buy tickets on a ship headed to Alaska, with Matt and Bam Bam in tow. They spent their first winter in a trapper shack on an island in the Alaska Panhandle, effectively stranded there for about a year and a half. By the time the skipper came and rescued them or offered them a ride to town, they were already sold on the idea of raising their family in the Alaskan wilderness. Billy said, the good Lord just made us slow down. After we realized we weren't going to die, we fell in love with everything. Amy said that it was their first taste of the wonder of freedom and the true value of family. The Brown family has since grown, but stayed in the bush and lived off the land. It was said that they had no running water or electricity and basically didn't have the modern comforts of an urban home. They were so isolated that months would pass before they would have any contact with the outside world and it was said that they developed their own accent because of this, referring to themselves as a wolf pack. They initially lived together in a one-room cabin that they built. Then later, the girls stayed with their parents in a two-story house while Matt and his brothers had separate quarters. According to some reports, Billy's memoir, One Wave at a Time, was published in 2007. After a book signing tour, the family was supposed to be featured in a TV documentary in which they would once again venture into the bush to recreate the journey described in the book and was set to air in 2009. It was said that they stayed at the Icy Strait Lodge in Hoonah, Alaska for the duration of the filming and would just ride a boat daily to get to the film site, which was allegedly leased by the Discovery Channel. The locals were said to have been hired to build a cabin that the Browns would be living in. When Alaskan bush people started airing in 2014, viewers were persuaded to believe that everything was normal reality. The family's residency in Alaska was questioned, and they got into trouble with the law for lying about it. Matthew, as well as his father and brothers, were fined for making false statements on the resident fishing and hunting licenses that they bought. The Browns were also charged with 60 counts of first-degree unsworn falsification and first- and second-degree theft after an out-of-state fraud, as they allegedly lied on the applications for the Alaska Permanent Fund dividend to receive annual oil revenue checks. When Amy was diagnosed with advanced lung cancer in 2017, the family left Alaska to give her the best medical treatment possible, and it was said that they stayed in a $2.7 million mansion in in Beverly Hills, California during that time. Later, they settled on a 400-acre property in Washington State but continued to live in the wilderness as filming resumed for the latter seasons of the series. Despite the controversy surrounding the show, Alaskan bush people gained a huge following, most of whom weren't bothered by the idea that it might be scripted or that it was a docudrama. The series ran for 12 seasons with the last episode aired in October 2020. Many fans were devastated on the death of the patriarch in February 2021 at the age of 68 and it also left them wondering if it would mean the cancellation of the show. Of all the siblings, it seemed that Matt was the most controversial and troublesome. Even before the show premiered, he was arrested for driving under the influence. In August 2013, Matt was drinking at a bar in Juneau, Alaska and hooked up with a girl. After having sex, he borrowed a car to buy chips from Walmart. According to a Walmart employee, Matt hit a motorcycle that was parked, causing damage, but then left. An officer was dispatched to the scene while another had to chase him down. When he was asked why he was acting weird, he said that he had attention deficit disorder. He also said that he was new to the area, as it had only been three weeks since he arrived. He failed all sobriety tests and was arrested. His father posted a $250 bail and in February 2014, he was sentenced to three days in jail and 18 months probation. In 2016, Matt went to rehab for alcohol abuse. It was said that after their boat broke down, he began 
started hanging out with some people in Juno and drank with them. He said that he had no problems handling life in the city, but what started as light drinking soon became a habit. His family abstained from alcoholic beverages, so he felt shame that he was so weak that he couldn't. What made things worse was that he kept it from them. They don't keep secrets from one another, so this felt like a betrayal. Although Matt had never reached the point of blacking out, he said, I could see myself spiraling. I was more withdrawn. I was slower. Things didn't excite me the way they used to. He made the decision to enter rehab facility so he could kick the habit. But before he could do that, he had to come clean with his family about his drinking problem. And it took him some time to work up the courage to do that. Fortunately, they gave him the support that he needed. In 2018, Matt returned to the rehab center for treatment of his alcoholism. Firstly, as an inpatient and then as an outpatient at the Betty Ford Center in California. There had been conflicting reports about this, as some said that he was there for six months, while others that he left the facility after 30 days, despite his parents' insistence that he stay for 90 days. He left for Palm Desert and was missing in action for weeks, not even spending Christmas with the family. Reportedly, he only returned when his parents threatened to fire him from the show. In his Instagram post in July 2020, he shared a photo of his sobriety coin, saying that he'd been sober for two years. In 2020, two women came out and accused Matt of raping them in a house in Canuga Park while he was drunk. It happened before he entered the rehab facility. On the 8th of July 2018, the 35-year-old Jessica Georges, the Browns family personal assistant, and 37-year-old Matt were in the swimming pool when he allegedly ripped off her bathing suit and forced himself on her. She tried to fight him off but said, I'm terrified of water. I can barely swim. So I do everything I can do to stay out of the water. She said that it seemed to go on for two and a half hours before Shelly Dawn, Matt's manager, pulled him off her and out of the pool and even reprimanded him over what he did. It was said that he cried and apologized. Prior to the incident, Jessica revealed that she was drinking Hennessy while Matt had vodka before the latter convinced her to get into the pool. She later told Gabe and Bear what happened via text messages and they were said to be very angry at Matt. Three days later, the 54-year-old Shelly was allegedly raped by Matt. She claimed that having had hip replacement surgery caused her hips and legs to become weak, so she couldn't stop him. She said, he was out of his mind drunk. After it happened, he told me that I raped him. That's how drunk he was. He also told the Lyft driver who came to get her that he was raped. She called Jessica later that night and told her about it. Some parts of their stories were confusing, such as the time they said they went back to the house to drop off Matt's phone, ID, and cards, which he left with them after the alleged crime had been committed. Despite being scared, they looked for him around the house and even filmed it, and then left when they realized he wasn't there. Jessica said she didn't disclose to the police some of the things Matt said to her at the time because she's just a nice person who loves his family and didn't want to get him into trouble. The two women reported the alleged crimes to the Los Angeles Police Department's Topanga Division and an investigation ensued. It was later handed down to the Los Angeles County District Attorney's Office, but the DA decided not to prosecute. It was said that the Discovery Channel was made aware of these allegations and they issued a statement regarding the matter. Due to the nature of the accusations, we felt that all cooperation would be most appropriately handled by law enforcement. Matt and his family couldn't be reached for comment. According to The Sun, the women were not paid for the interviews as they went public with their accusations. On his Instagram post in April 2021, Matt divulged secrets that he had been keeping for the longest time over a campfire. He said, I'm cold and I don't have any money and I hardly have anything to eat and there were things he needed to get off his chest so he could sleep. Admittedly, his thoughts were a bit scattered and the timeline was somewhat confusing, but he disclosed things about his family and the show in a nine minute video clip. He also said he's willing to answer questions. While he was in Betty Ford, he learned that lying about his life to the public has a detrimental effect on him. He said, I loved filming the show, but I didn't like lying about the way I live and the way things are in life. At one point, he wanted to quit, but had no money and nowhere to go, so he stayed. His dad controlled everything, and all the money they made from the series went to him. Matt revealed that the production company took the beginning part of his dad's book and pitched it to the network. When they started to film for the show, they were made to act as if that was how they lived. But contrary to living in candlelight, they had a generator that they would take wherever they went. They even had a collection of movies that they watched. If he were to be believed, one could only guess what else they lied about. And so, how much of the whole series was scripted? Matt said his parents hired private detectives to follow him around and even installed spyware in his phone so they could keep track of his activities, which drove him crazy. He resorted to threats to make them stop, but they just used it against him, saying that he'd lost his mind. He yelled and screamed at them because no one listened to him compassionately, and it was what his dad did in the past anyway. 
yelled and screamed at them. Matt broke into his dad's hotel room to get documents and into his laptop so he would have proof and so learned the names of the detectives. He also had a lot of things to say about the production company. He accused them of supplying his parents with cocaine to give to him, which caused him to start acting weirdly. A guy in the company who was part of security was said to be a bully who lied about him to his family. So Matt asked a friend in the production to get him to stop or he would file a restraining order against him. But he was made to feel that he was making it all up. He also felt that one of his brothers was being pushed the edge of his sanity by the production as they did to him but no one cared. He tried to reconnect with his mom and fix things, but it didn't go well, as his sisters looked at him in disgust when they saw him. His mom asked him to sign some papers to turn the company over to her, and he discovered that they allegedly stole $360,000 from him, which seems excessive, but she still wouldn't give him $100 for food. He believed that they intentionally didn't help him because they wanted to keep him under their thumb. The production and his family have yet to release their statement regarding his allegations. Matt also opened up about meeting a married woman with two kids after a stint at Betty Ford, and they fell in love. He knew it was wrong, but they apparently lived together for three years. However, when the woman relapsed and they argued, he left. These days, fans can keep abreast of what's happening with Matt through his Instagram posts and stories, if they can be believed. In April 2021, he said that he'd found work at a friend's orchard. After all that happened and all that he revealed, he's been taking one day at a time and spreading positivity to his followers. He shared his home, his new life, his day-to-day -day activities, and all that he's learned to inspire others. One only hopes that he can maintain some stability in his life. Thank you for spending some time with us. Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss another video. We also handpick these videos which we recommend you watch next. You can talk to us on all social medias or ask a question in the comments below. Thank you for being with us and we'll see you back tomorrow.